Buzz Rothfield reporting that the Eels will undergo a major overhaul under Jason Riles. We knew that was going to happen, but yeah. Buzz mm. saying that he's considering naming uh, State of Origin hero Mitchell Moses, who, by the way, gave up, sacrificed his body for this state. So show a little bit more respect for <laughs> Parramatta, everybody. Um, as the new skipper to replace Clint Gutherson and obviously Junior Barlow and, and Gutho mm. were, were co-captains. Um, yeah. And saying that Gutho... Uh, could be under pressure to retain that fullback role with talk that Blaze Talunga would be offered that role. Mm -hmm. And the Eels indicating that interim coach Trent Barrett won't be offered a role under Jason Riles. Yeah. And Riles and uh, Trent Barrett are actually close, you know. Trent come... Barrett was his captain, was he not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From their Dragons days. Yeah. So interesting. But uh, thoughts on that? I think... It's probably a change that needs to happen, right? Like we've we've talked about, you know, the big personalities at Parramatta and the um, the lack of leadership within some of those senior players at the moment. Um, maybe just a change is exactly what they need in just shaking things up. I don't think anything the way that they've gone this year, anything could be should be guaranteed either. Um, yep, good and point. so yeah. they realise that something massive needs to change because they have a lot of talent on that roster. Mm. Something needs to shift um, to get them going a little bit. So if it's Mitch Moses as captain, yeah, I think he's I your halfback. It kind of makes sense to me. It's not yeah. that controversial. I mean, I guess it. Yeah, he is the halfback and he does make sense in that way. But it, how much difference mm. is as a captain, is he going to be than Clint Gutherson? You know, well, I that's wonder a, if it's just taking I wonder, the, if uh, I wonder if it's just taking a little bit of, um, not heat, or it's just taking a little bit of that, um, the eyes off Clint Gutherson at the back and potentially framing him for a move somewhere else, mm. whether or not. I don't necessarily a, think yeah. maybe out of the club, but just out of fullback. I think yeah. I think out of fullback is, and mm -hmm. I'm going to preface this by saying I love Gutho as a player. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's. I think Gutho is one of the most underrated. Yeah. Like I know he's, you know, had his moments and he's been picked in Origin mm -hmm. and he's played in the grand final. But in terms of like effort, I work think he's rate, one of the work effort. rate one of the most underrated players in the game. Yeah, he's talking at the back. He's positioning. It's all there. Um, in saying that, the Eels are still running 16th, mm -hmm. and I'm not. That's not saying you put it down to one person, but you know we've. Go back 12 months when the Eels were looking for X Factor and they were talking about Jaden Campbell and they were talking about where do we find this guy. You've got Blaze Talungi there who mm. is who mm. did not take up his player option for next season, so he's able to go and other clubs are clamouring for him. You, If you're Jason Rolls, you need to keep Blaze Talungi because mm. um, that, that will be a massive loss for a club that's already... You know, I can handle losing Ethan Sanders to Canberra because mm. Ethan Sanders is just a seven. I'm, I'm not saying that oh, he's just a seven, <laughs> but he, he's a halfback. Yeah. So you've got Mitch Moses ahead of you. You want first grade. Mm. You're not going to get it there at the moment. Which so is fair enough. Blaze Talangi can play around the place. Mm. Um, you can also play in the halves if they need yeah, to reshuffle. Yeah, yeah. and I so you want to keep him at all costs. Yeah. And he's got a younger brother, Ryder, who just got named in the schoolboys um, uh, Australian schoolboys uh, championships Champion. and uh, playing prop. His dad coaches at Cabramatta in the area. He's as Parramatta as it gets. So mm. you need to you need to um, keep him. And the fact that Gutho, he's 29, he'll be 30 when next season starts. But he is a guy that had a couple of knee mm. surgeries and he, he's, he's, you do a lot of effort at the back at Parramatta. You yeah. do a lot of work. I was going to say, I don't think if that move does happen next year and Gutho goes into the centres and Talangi goes goes into fullback. I don't think that's necessarily like a controversial move or even like, it, no. you know, a, not a massive call by Riles anyway. I just feel like it's probably a, a natural progression for Gutho considering um, the toll that the work rate, that the effort has taken on his body, particularly this year. And I remember speaking to Gutho maybe right before Brad Arthur was, was sacked and he was just talking about how, you know, because he does everything at 100%. Training is always at 100%, 110%. Um, he never takes a backward step, never takes, you know, an off day. He's one of the fittest guys. And this year is sort of the first time with that knee injury, he's sort of gone, okay, I, I, where I can, I need to rest my body. I need to take yeah. a step back a little bit. So, and maybe moving him out of that fullback role where he mm. is 110% every single week mm. might actually help preserve and prolong his body. Yeah. So I don't think it's like a moving Talungi there, like you said, who's this sort of, viewed as the X factor that Para have been looking for isn't 
as controversial as people might think? So no, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I just I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think mm. they need a little bit of like a spark, like some speed, something. Yep. Um, in that back line, um, and as we said, like Gutho is a warrior, um, but if he's still in the team, that's great. Mm. He's still going to be working well, hard. He's yeah. still going to be yeah. everywhere. He's yeah. still he's still going to be setting a lot of those standards. Yeah. Um, while while we're sitting in the Maddie Johns podcast mm. feed for the next couple of weeks, I'll ask yeah. you this question: Maddie in his column pitched up moving Gutho to five eighth to mm-hmm. partner Mitch Moses, and then Dylan Brown to thirteen, so he could play both sides of the ruck in attack. What are your thoughts on that one? Mm, I don't know, Dylan Brown. No, I, I I think that's the halves combination, right? Yeah, mm. I feel like Dylan Brown and yeah. and Mitch. That's that's the halves combination. Yeah. I feel like Dill Brown is only just... We've seen sort of glimpses of how good he can be and he's only just sort of scratching the surface of his potential. Um, and I, I don't know, if I'm an Eels fan, we've signed him long-term to be, you know, Mitchell Moses' halves partner. I sort of want to see what you get for that money. Mm. So... Um, so maybe, mean, defensive, I don't know, defensively is then the other question you have to ask because these mm. days most locks are the glue in the defensive line. So Yeah, well, Matt, Matty's thoughts around that were that he likes to, he'd like to see Dylan both sides of the ruck getting the ball. Mm. Um, he thinks he'd be really dangerous. Kind of the role that we thought Kalen Ponga mm. might play in Origin 3 last week, which yeah, didn't okay. really eventuate. Defensively, I raised that same question with him yeah. and he said, well, back in the old days... The locks used to just defend three in from the sideline anyway, so you could have your winger, your centre, and then you know yeah. whether you put your your five eight there, and then he defends one in next to maybe a Jermaine Hopgood or someone who mm. may be forced to an edge there, or, mm. or Ryan Madison if he's still there amid this mm. clean out that Riles will go through because you know uh, Madison's defended in the middle, Hopgood's defended in the middle, so. Dylan yeah. Brown wouldn't necessarily be out of place there. It'd, it'd be yeah. a switch yeah. a little bit. But, um, yeah, interesting thoughts. I like the creativity. And yeah. I think they probably do need a little bit of a switch up in how that forward pack plays as well, like some different body shapes. And it's been quite the same for a little while now, hasn't yeah. it? You know, they yeah, they probably do need someone that has that real ball-playing ability yeah. and can kind of roam around a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I like it from a creativity Perspective, I don't know. You don't answer. sound sold. I'm not sold, yeah. Sorry oh. to Matty Johns and his <laughs> Jeez. Um, Are you sold? What, what do you like? I, Eels fans? I think there needs to be a shake-up. Like mm. you said, something has yeah. to change because mm. stale's not the right word, but it's like you said, there's been a lot of similar types and similar mm. roles. And, yeah, you look at – I know there are – everyone's saying that Parramatta's roster is, you know, it's better than a wooden spoon roster, which they're mm. currently fighting for, but – I don't know if it's as strong as mm. some people make out at times. So yeah. even though there's guys, you know, Sean Lane was player of the year a couple of years ago. He's Jermaine got, Hopgood's yeah. had a, had, you know, had some, uh, you know, since coming from mm. Penrith, has been good. We've spoken about the halves and Gutho, but number nine is still mm. a big issue there for mine. Yeah. Um, whether Matt Arthur continues to develop in that role or if they have to go out and find somebody, but... There's no one on the market, is there? Who yeah. do you, where do you go and find these guys? And yeah. mm-hmm. um, there's a Ford pack that's getting getting old really quickly. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're going to go, oh, hang on, you've got these younger guys at other clubs that are making those yards and punching holes. Yeah. And you're seeing mm-hmm. what the Spencer Lenus of the world are doing mm-hmm. yeah. in the Origin Arena going, okay, well, where's that at Para? And look, the Eels have these young guys of um, Charlie Geimer, the, the, yeah. the kid from Tomorrow, who's he looks terrific. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to a Vady coming through the, the you know, um, uh, young uh, Preak coming through. Mm. So they've got these guys, but I think it's they're, hard for forwards, they're though, a little especially bit. Especially when they're, you know, in their late teens too. It's mm. sort of different to blooding like a, a an outside back who's a yeah. late teen. Mm. Yeah. Um, but then, like, and I know that you say, oh, the forward pack's sort of aging quickly, but I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, aren't like Junior Polo and Regan Campbell Gillard 30? 30-ish, 30-ish. Yeah. yeah. Maybe even, yeah, yeah like, the, I mean, if you're in your late 20s, you know, 30, that's sort of where you're supposed to be peaking at a forward, right? Yeah. But not maybe ageing isn't even the right word. It's like they've, their ceiling has, they've hit Reached their ceiling. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gina Paulo's 30, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I think um, you keep 
you keep Dylan Brown and Mitch Moses um, as your halves. And if you want Brown to roam both sides of the ruck, why not roam both sides of the ruck? Mm. You know, this this idea that one half has to play one side of the field and the other on the other side of the field. I mean, even Penrith sort of have a similar uh, setup. But if either R- Jerome Luai or Nathan Cleary, you know, if there's a set play or they see something, you see them, you know, mm. roaming yeah. on both sides of the field. So no reason why and Dylan Brown's a runner right there's mm. no reason why he couldn't sort of take on that role it's going to be fascinating to see what Jason Rolls does with that I team know. what do you make of Barrett not be... being there sorry to interrupt oh that's okay I was just going to say I, I spoke to Gutho a couple of weeks ago about all of this and he was very open to everything he realises that there's going to be a big change and there needs to be because he just wants to win mm. but whatever they're doing at the moment is not working they just want to win so mm. come in shake it up do something new because yeah. it's not working because it's funny Obviously, he's got a good pedigree, Jason Riles, mm. having coached under some of the best. But he ha- we haven't seen him with his own team. He hasn't mm. been in. A, he hasn't been a reserve grade coach where you've seen the system or the style that he's playing. So it's going to be interesting to see what differences he implements from where he's been previously. You know, Roosters yeah. and Storm and you know yeah. uh, everywhere. And that might so. be a real advantage for the Eels early next year because it makes it hard for opposition coaches to prepare for them because they don't know what they're going to get. Mm. Take yeah. a while to adjust to them. I'm just wishful thanks, thinking for you. Thanks, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just giving you some hope. <laughs> I'm just getting ready for Spoon Bowl round 27 against the Tigers at Campbelltown. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. Oh, can we just can I just staple Mitch Moses' biceps back together <laughs> just for that last game? Something. Probably could. Hey, he's done his job this year. Exactly, yeah. yeah. He's earned his rest. 